Hey, it's Bless So Mike, and today, tonight, wherever you're at in this world, because we have all kinds of time zones, if nobody knew that, there's all kinds of time zones, and you know, y'all are in daylight, dark, whatever. Anyway, today I have Ryan Harrison, and Ryan has got a movie coming out on Bayview Entertainment. That could you all guess what the name of this? Just anybody, anybody in the audience, can you guess? That's right, Ninja Badass. So I'm going to refer to you as Ninja Badass since they're Ryan for the rest of this. So, Mr. Mr. Ninja Badass, mm -hmm. how are you doing today? I am great. I'm great. I uh, don't really think of anything fun to say. Um, the director of photography for Ninja Badass brought his little dog over. So I was watching his little dog. If anyone's seen Ninja Badass, they would think that's very concerning because a lot of little dogs get hurt in Ninja Badass. But this one, uh, he escaped so, fine. So, well, wait a minute. So are you saying that there was animals that were hurt in the filming of Ninja Badass? Well, not in the film. Not, not in real life. Oh, OK, OK. okay. Yeah. No, no, definitely we gotta, not. We got to clear that up, man. We got to clear yeah. that up. Yeah, all, all the animals were performed under the supervision of their owner. <laughs> which I put in the credits. Um, yeah, and they're all happy. I mean, hopefully they're all still alive. There were a bunch of cows in the movie. Probably some of them aren't still alive. We okay. shot it in like 2015, so I'm sure some of those cows haven't made it this far. They've they become, they become somebody's dinner, probably. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But the dogs are still around. They're happy. Too bad they didn't invite you over to eat some of that cow with them. I know. I mean, well, we filmed it in Indiana. I'm in uh, California now. Oh, you, you filmed it right above me because I'm in Kentucky. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm from Indianapolis and um, I always wanted to make a movie there. Uh, I went to school, IU in Bloomington. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to Vegas and I moved to L.A. And I saved up money to make this movie. So I took some some of my friends back to Indiana. Um, and then, yeah, we cast it uh, with pretty much everyone is from Indiana or um, either from Indianapolis or Chicago or northern Indiana. Pretty much everyone in, that was involved with the movies from the Midwest. Cool. Well, let's back up a little bit, Ninja Badass. Uh, so tell me, uh, as, a, as a child, what inspired you to maybe be a film person you know director writer producer what what was that that sparked you to want to do that um i don't think i really knew as a child that i wanted to make movies and stuff like i always see like you always see interviews with directors and stuff like the mm -hmm. famous ones are always like oh yeah i was filming it, when i was five years old i filmed <laughs> stuff on the you know the spinny film and we put movies on for our family and shit but no nah, that wasn't me like, I, I would draw stuff. I would draw fucked up stuff all the time. Mm. Um, that was kind of my thing. And I always wanted to be, like, a lawyer or a plastic surgeon just to make a bunch of money. Um, but then in, in college, I got interested in making movies because I'm just so into movies. Like, I, I love movies. So what are some of your... In your so opinion, much. What, yeah. what, in your opinion, what are the top five movies of all time? The top... For... For me personally, yeah, for you personally, yeah. Um, my favorites, uh, God of Cookery by Stephen Chow, um, Total Recall, the 80s one, Paul not Grogan, that, not that crap they redid, right? No, I don't okay, think good, it went like good. that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jackie Brown is definitely one of my favorites, great movie. Mm. I don't know, it's tough. I usually don't think like, oh, uh, Sonatine, Takeshi Kitano. You ever see that? Mm -hmm. um, that's great. Hmm. Number five, huh? Probably can't say Ninja Badass. It's not out yet. Uh, you say whatever you want. Yeah, I don't know. I'd throw the fifth element in there. Really? really the like fifth the fifth element? Song. Yeah. Wow. You know, but, it's one of those movies just like Waterworld or The Postman. You either hate it or you love it. Oh, I, don't yeah. know people, I don't know if anyone's comparing Fifth Element to Waterworld. I'm saying it's one of those kind of movies that you either love it or you hate it. You okay, know, yeah, there's maybe. There's no in between. There's like, 
Yeah. You just absolutely love the movies or you hate them. Me yeah. personally, I don't like any, any of the three of them, but you know, that's just me. Fifth yeah. Element? Yeah, I'm not a Fifth Element fan at all. Oh my God. What I'm about like, the other Luke? What, what about the other Luke Besson movies? You see like La Femme Nikita or Subway? La Femme Nikita is pretty cool. I like that movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you got well, to remember, my favorite movies of all time were Star Wars. They live. Which one? The original Star Wars. Of oh, okay. The the original Star Wars. Uh, they live. Yeah. Which you've seen this popped. Uh, mm-hmm. Night of the Comet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Plenty of the Apes, the original. Okay. And probably, uh, just for good measure, put a horror movie in there. Uh, something like, uh, I don't know, uh, anything Robert England did, probably, which is pretty much Night. <laughs> Nightmare on uh, Elm Street, you know. I mean, uh, but you know, that's what makes us all different. You know, that's what makes us all different is we all like different types of music, movies and music and things like that. So this wasn't your first movie, was it? Or have you yep. done other movies in the past? Yeah, well, this is my first uh movie starring and feet and uh writing and directing and producing and all that. Um, I have a background in VFX. So I did VFX on a vampire movie, on a vampire movie called The Revenant. I've heard of that. Yeah. Huh? I've heard of that. Okay. Yeah, it's a great movie. It's it's different than mine. Um, it's a lot like artsier, like serious, emotional kind of vampire movie. Uh, it's really dope. But I did VFX on it for like a year. And who who? How can people see that or? Is it through a oh, no. what it's company like, is it through? It it was um I think it was it was lightning, but I don't think they even released it in the US like on Blu-ray and stuff. It was released in Japan, like in theaters, and like I have a actually I have a German poster for it over here too. Oh, but wow. it's a it's a fucking awesome movie. Like it was in all these different countries and shit. Oh wow, that's a cool poster. But the just yeah, yeah, yeah. Um see, there's a Blu-ray in the and the DVD. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, and then they didn't even release it here. It's just so weird. Like, I don't know. It's just the way shit goes. So the I think um the director he's trying to figure out how to let make it so people can watch it. I don't know. So yeah, you might not even be able to see it. I guess you could buy it on uh eBay or something. We do um, we need to get Peter at Baby to maybe release it. Maybe. Yeah, you know the Phantasm movies, right? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. So so the director of this movie, he did the spheres. Um, he like designed the spheres for two, three, and four for Phantasm oh, wow. two, three, and four. So um, so I worked with him and he worked on a bunch of stuff, like doing all kinds of shit. Like he he worked on like making the Starship Troopers ships and oh, just yeah. like I saw that in the theater. Yeah, yeah, I love Starship Troopers. But he's done all kinds of stuff. And so it was great like working with him because I was just working in his living room in Vegas. And um I just learned all kinds of VFX stuff. Uh, so after that, I worked on John Dies at the End for a bit. Um, it's a Don Coscarelli movie. And um, and then I got into the movie trailer industry and I made movie trailers and stuff for like a decade. But I saved so up money those, to make my own those, movie. Are those movie trailers like movies that actually came out or were they? Yeah, like- yeah. so it's like, it's a legit trailer house um in burbank but we did we do stuff for disney and lionsgate it's like every big disney release of the past like six or seven years or something like i I worked on it for the home entertainment part of it oh for the home entertainment marketing yeah well so are you still doing that now um i've pretty much gotten out of it pretty much Mm because i'm trying to get more into the movie stuff um hopefully just like write on a tv show or or something you know i still want to like pitch my own movies to people and whatever hopefully Mm -hmm. i can make another movie um if not i'll just save up the money to make another movie eventually and i'd like like did you use like did you use like any of the uh gofundme type things to help finance ninja badass no no i mean i figured no one no one knew me anyways like no one's gonna give me money anyways so i i just didn't even really try and plus like part of it for me i guess is that like 
well, I was making pretty good money with the trailer industry stuff anyway. Mm -hmm. So it feels like disingenuous of me to be like, hey, help me, give me some money to make my, uh, you know, trashy ninja movie um, so I can film some boobs and butts and stuff when I have money of my own. Um, but yeah, so yeah. I so how did so how did Ninja Badass come about? I mean, what, what was the beginning stages of that? Um, well, I started writing it like 15 years ago, and uh, it was a lot. It was a lot different movie back then. But I've always been really into John Waters movies. I probably should have said Female Trouble was like my fifth favorite movie. Um, so I like trashy movies, and I like ninja movies. I like American Ninja. There are these uh, Godfrey Ho ninja movies called like Ninja Terminator, Ninja Thunderbolt that I really like, I was really into. And so, um, yeah, I don't know, I just wrote a script. I mean, it wasn't the first script that I, I wrote. Like I wrote some other script about some horrible movie and it just sucked first. <laughs> um, but then I wrote this movie and then I rewrote it to star me because um, <laughs> originally it didn't star me. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It just came out of my love for ninja movies and Asian stuff. If you if you liked American Ninja, maybe you could have caught up Michael Dudikoff and he might have done. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but, I mean, he could. Um, it'd be fun to have someone make an appearance like that. Like Cynthia, it'd be great to have like Cynthia Rothrock. Oh yeah, that's another good one. Yeah, I'd love to have her like in the sequel, just like in a in a small weird part. Um. But yeah, yeah, Dudikoff would be dope. I don't know if he'd do it. And actually, the, the guy that directed American Ninja, he did see my movie. Um, he judged it at a film festival. Oh, did he? I can't remember his name. Should have got a quote from, from him. But he's like in a different country. Like he lives in like Poland. <laughs> and the film festival was in Italy. So it's like he didn't go over there. It was like during the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Um, just another thing ruined by the pandemic i could have met the director of american ninja who watched my ninja movie and probably hated it did you win an award yeah well there you go yeah we, weird as fuck is the award i got <laughs> the italian one it was amazing because like they they subtitled the movie in italian and they played it in a theater there in a small town in like northern italy wow yeah. So how many festivals have you put the movie in? It was in like 20, between 20 and 30. And how good did it do? Close to 30. I mean, I think, I think it did very well. It got, you know, awards, like best, com like I'm happy just getting like best comedy. That's like the biggest compliment I could get. Yeah. Got like best comedy and best grindhouse movie. I got a best actor award. Um. But it sucks because like the first film festival we were in was like right before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then the pandemic happened and everything like went online and it was just like, it was kind of a nightmare. Um, not the ideal situation. So what would have been fun for you to go to all these you weren't able to go to because the pandemic happened? Well, I mean, I still went to the ones that were in person, but then no one else did. Like it was just like, <laughs> although some of them, it was just like a couple of filmmakers were there and then there's like no one else because no one, no one would go to a theater, you know, like yeah. no one would go outside or do anything, um, which is probably how it was a bit before, but made way worse during the pandemic. Um, so before that, I tried to get into like Sundance and South by Southwest and Fantastic Fest and almost got into Fantasia, I think. Um, but they all just, the movie's too trashy. Really? Too real. The movie's too real. Too real? Yeah. So, so without telling everybody the whole synopsis, you know, uh, you know, the whole meaning of the movie, tell people what the movie is about. Well, there's this guy. This guy... He uh, sees this hot chick get stolen from a pet store, and then he um, becomes a ninja to try and get her back. So then she'll sleep with him, because that's what happens in action movies. And that's what the whole movie's about, him being a, a ninja and trying to get this woman? Yeah. And then, you know, this guy trains, the, uh, trains this guy 
to beat up this guy. That's the bad guy. And the bad guy, you know, he also has this sweet van. It's fucking sick. And then there's also this lady that is going around killing ninjas, you know. So you were doing Cobra Kai before Cobra Kai even started. <sighs> Maybe. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of weird because there's like certain things that I've always stayed away from watching. Just because either like it's similar to what I him into or like I don't want to copy it. So I'm like, I'm just not going to watch it. But yeah, no, I don't know. It could be the exact same storyline as like Karate Kid 8. No, it's just it's just funny that you said this guy trained this guy to kick this guy's ass and this girl. Well, of course, Karate, you know, that didn't have a girl who's killing ninjas. But you know what I mean? You get yeah. the, you get the point. I mean, every every pretty much every. Every ninja movie should, every martial arts movie should have someone training someone at some point. If it doesn't, it's probably not a martial arts movie. It's just some weird alternate. I don't, I don't, you're just watching a boxing match or something. I don't know. It's kind of like watching a Star Wars movie. Every Star Wars movie should have somebody training somebody to be somebody, right? Yeah. I mean, you I have mean, to. Because then, because then, you know, the guy training him has to like die or like influence <laughs> the student somehow. And, whatever i'm not saying that that doesn't happen even me. even maybe it does happen in my movie I'm even in book of boba we see luke training gogru or baby yoda whereas before when we saw luke luke was being trained by yoda so you know it, it makes sense there's always somebody training somebody unless you're in the new star wars movie you just pick up a lightsaber and you're a jedi right <laughs> yeah I don't, you know? I don't even remember the new ones that much they look pretty. I, that's all I remember is that the last one looked really pretty. Yeah, and yeah, but we we just won't bother about it. But anyway, you know, it's like the people that rag on the prequels. You know, it's like oh my god, whatever. But anyway, so um, it's coming out on Blu-ray yep. and DVD, right? Through uh... you. I'm not sure exactly with the DVD, but the Blu-ray definitely. I think Three. it's going to be streaming. I don't, I don't know. You just, my... Are you just excited to have it coming out? Um. Yeah, I mean, a bit ner nervous because it's like half my life, you know, I spent on this movie. Um, So something good better come out of it. But no, it, it is nice. Like, I mean, my whole life, I've always just wanted to make a movie. So I just did it. Um, so yeah, it is nice. Uh, and it's nice that people like it and just, just to have someone watch it is like pretty amazing. Um, but yeah. And when someone does really like it, it's really cool. Um, cause I'm just so into movies anyways. Mm -hmm. So I know like how important movies are to me and like movies that I've liked or like I, I'll spend like certain periods of life in my certain periods of my life, like, I'll just have a certain movie that kind of, like, takes me through it, you know? Like, I was watching Bronson, like, for months <laughs> uh, 10 years ago, because I'm like, oh, my life sucks. If I can only be, like, Tom Hardy, mm -hmm. punch my way out of this prison cell. But, um, so that's nice. You know, I just want to spread joy and everything. Um, it's just a stupid comedy, you know? You just don't take it too serious, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there's, uh, there's kind of serious stuff if you like dig deep enough. Mm -hmm. But it's how, just long, a, how long did it take you to make it? Well, I'm uh, like film it. Yeah, um, film it. So we shot it in 2015. And that was about 30 or 40 days. And it was in Indiana. So the weather's kind of all over the place. It was in the fall. We started shooting in like October and then we stopped shooting when we were driving to a location and we turned a corner and there's snow on the ground everywhere. And it was like, oh, okay, can't, can't film anymore. So then the next year, 2016, fall 2016, we came back and shot another like 10 or 20 days. Mm -hmm. And it was good because um, I did, we didn't shoot the beginning and we didn't finish shooting the ending. And I feel like that's good to leave those towards the end because then you can get a sense of like the, how the rest of your movie is going and kind of where where it needs to start and where it needs to end and, and 
you can really tweak things and improve them mm -hmm. by knowing what's going on in the middle. And I read that, like, I was reading the, the making of the game Doom and um, what's his face, Cormac or Romero, whatever that dude's name is. He was saying how, like, you should wait to make the first level of a game until you've made, like, the rest of the levels or something. Because you know where you want to start. Um, but yeah. I, don't know. I mean, also, you can kind of see, like, in the ending fight for the movie, like, we shot, like, there are, like, three or four seasons represented because <laughs> we shot and it was like 20 degrees one day like no leaves on anything and then there would be like another shot where it's like everything's super green because it was like shot like in the summer um so, so it doesn't bother no, me so there's no continuity to it eh, i don't know i don't know if people really notice it no one's ever like brought it up to me uh-huh there's also a chase scene in the woods where it will just cut from leaves on the trees to like no leaves on the trees back to leaves on the trees. <laughs> no one's ever said anything. So I guess there are other things going on in the movie that people, uh, you know, pay attention to. Yeah. Well, did you, did you edit it yourself too? Yeah. 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 Edited, did the VFX. Um, Cause that's my background, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna have someone else cut my movie and plus i really like doing it so i mean it wasn't it was hard it, you know it's like an emotional roller coaster and everything because you hate it and then you love it then you hate it then you love it but um i have a lot of fun doing it it just took forever because i was doing the movie trailer you know i had a day job and then I'd come home at night and try and edit shit it wasn't always fun and you get merch for it too like the posters behind you and stuff yeah yeah you know marketing is my background so it's like you can either pay someone a low rate and then they don't know how to do it or you can do it yourself if it's your background you know it looks like the poster behind you the blue one has a lot of quotes on it from are those from festivals and stuff uh yeah those are just festival laurels oh man that's pretty good that's a lot uh, yeah i mean that's not even all of them either like i made these posters like i don't know when but um oh. Yeah, the festivals. Yeah, we ended up getting into a lot of them. I mean, it sucked at first because like, okay, so after we shot the movie in 2016, then I spent like three or four years editing it and doing the VFX. And then I started submitting to festivals and it just got rejected like for a year or something, just kept getting rejected by like everybody. Mainly because they're like the, the bigger festivals that don't entertain this kind of shit. Mm -hmm. um, but then, yeah, eventually start getting into festivals. And it's like with festivals, like when you start getting into some, then it just leads to more because people see your movie at a different festival and they're like, okay, I'll put it in my festival. Like that's what happened with the Italy one. Have you ever been to Nightmares? No, I've been to South by Southwest. Okay. I've never well, Nightmares, been Nightmares is a festival in Ohio. I think it's a pretty big horror festival. But because we got into that one, we got into the, the one in Italy. Hmm um but yeah well, that's cool yeah. and and how did the thing with baby come about did you search them out or did they find you um i had a producer's i i got a producer's rep um blood sweat honey is the company i think it's called blood sweat honey and then he found the distributor of baby wow um, nice yeah nice and uh that's coming out june June 14th is the Blu-ray. June right. 10th, it'll be showing at a theater in uh, Los Angeles. You hoping um, there's going to be a lot of people there? Uh, yeah, I hope so. I mean, because the, the screenings are fun when there are people there. Because <laughs> it is it is like a midnight movie type thing. Mm -hmm. So it's all just like shock value and just like nonstop crazy shit, boobs, Boobs, decapitation, boobs, decapitation, cow exploding, you know, over and over. Um, so it's fun to watch with a crowd. I ordered 10,000 of these flyers that I'm going to hand out to people on the street in LA. So hopefully someone. I'm all the rain you all, but I'm in Eastern Kentucky and it's raining cats and dogs outside. So that's why it's time for us to go to bed. Can you hear it? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's raining cats and dogs outside, but uh, we're still doing this no matter what. So, you know, uh, yeah, I can't wait to get the Blu-ray. I hope to get it this week, and I'm going to pop it in on the big TV over there and watch it and uh, be blown away and think that I'm watching some, you know, uh, something I just don't have a clue what I'm watching, you know, which is good yeah. because, you know, those are the best movies in the world when you have no clue and you just pop it in and you go, damn, that's going to be my favorite movie now, you know? Hmm. This is a pretty high, uh, it's a high, it's a high standard to get to. Hey, I you, you really... never know. I mean, hey, one of my favorite movies of all time I told you was They Live in, and uh, Night of the Comet. Night of the Comet only has like four humans in the whole movie, I think, don't it? Well, I mean, at the first of it, it has uh, several humans, but as the show goes along, I think there's only four humans in the whole thing, you know? So, well, I mean. I have way more humans in my movie, so. <laughs> there you go. And cows. I got, I got a pig. I got cows. I have big booby girls hanging out everywhere. Wow. You'll see. You'll see. And that's the cover, right? Is that the cover behind you? Um, is that what the Blu-ray is going to look like? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, this is the cover of the Blu-ray. Yeah. That one there with the guy with the pig? Are well, they... no, the yellow, the yellow, the yellow one. Okay. Yeah. So that's the cover of the Blu-ray, and then um, just the poster, poster for the theater is is like this. Um. But yeah, and then this is pretty much the back of the Blu-ray, kind of. That's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, well, I hope you like it. Well, congratulations. Wish I could be there. Well, congratulations on it, and. Uh, Maybe maybe I'll call you up and I'll watch it and you can watch it with me and tell me what I'm missing or something. I don't know. We might we might do something like that. Who the hell knows? We could do a post interview, maybe. Yeah, who knows? If, we'll you, do something. if any of it stirs any questions for you, I mean just let me know. We can do another. I like I like those uh I've never done one like that, but I see them all the time where people do screenings and the guy that's in it or the producer or whatever is watching along with them and uh those are always fun because all of a sudden you're watching something and all of a sudden the guy goes yeah watch that watch that oh oh yeah right there you know so <laughs> i mean you should just watch the whole movie i would say watch that watch that for the whole movie i think that's <laughs> that's hilarious man but um how can people reach out to you if they um, want to I mean, get something autographed or they want a poster or yeah. Any of the merch you have? Do you have a website or anything? Yeah, yeah, ninjabadassmovie.com. I mean, if you just search for Ninja Badass, um, it'll come up. And then there's a Facebook page, Twitter. Uh, you can add me as a friend on Facebook or, you know, email me. Do whatever. I I'm out there. Um, but, yeah, and then uh, on the website, there's also a link to get to buy T-shirts and posters and stuff um, from T Public. T Public. That's who I go through too. Yeah, I have yeah. a T Public account for my new logo. I just debuted a couple weeks ago. So uh, nice. uh, it's a nice company, man. They make nice product. They have a lot of cool stuff, and and they have deals too. Like you know, sometimes you can get a T shirt mm -hmm. for thirteen dollars. Next day, it's like twenty two. I mean, it's yeah. pretty neat. It's pretty neat that they do that. So is that where all the posters and everything are made? Um, like these, I, I custom, you know, printed them and stuff, but yeah, yeah. You can buy posters there and, okay. um, stickers and t-shirts, you know, cups. cups. Yeah. You can buy a, you can buy a coffee cup kind of like, kind of like this. Oh yeah. That's awesome. I like that. Kind of. I think it, I think I put this design on there and then there's this guy on the back. This is the bad guy. I like that. Big Twitty. I like that. I'm going to have to go there and, and purchase me one of those for my shelf over here because, mm. like I said, before we start, I'm going to redo all my shelves. So I'll put it on my shelf and uh, redo it with a ninja theme. Just a ninja yeah. badass, total ninja badass collection. Yeah. Yeah. Buy everything off of yeah. my T Public page. Yeah. Buy everything off your T Public page. 
I went. I, I went by the speedos that you got on in that picture, man. Oh uh, yeah. Well, they're in, they're on Amazon somewhere. I can't remember. <laughs> no, I want the actual ones that you got on now. Oh, oh. oh God. Well, yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> the, put, I mean, a, put them in a frame behind me back here, and somebody's like, "What the hell is that?" You know, that's a good idea. Actually, put them in a frame. Um, yeah. And I can put them up somewhere. Yeah. I mean, I guess I would sell them for a lot of money. I think it have to be a lot of money. A lot of money. Wow. Okay. Well, it's been it's been good talking to you, Ryan. And yeah, you uh, thanks for uh, entertaining me tonight. It was very entertaining. And we'll talk soon. All right.